I go home from like being a uni one day and my mate was like, oh, there was a call for me from a guy called uh, Steve P. And I was like, I just thought it was one of my friends like winding me up. And things were obviously going like pretty well on the, the racing front. You got no, noticed by a certain man behind Royal, Royal Racing at the time. And I think you had a, you got home to like a message from one of your housemates that, that you might have had a phone call that you want to return. Is that right? Yeah, I got, I mean, it was, uh, I'd raced in 2000. I'd been in my second year of the junior category. Um, and, uh, you know, at that season, it sort of all came together really for me as a rider. And I kind of ended up winning the, the British National Series. I won the British Champs and the Jewel. There was Jewel Slalom was a thing or Jewel was a thing then as well. So I had a really good season, did my first ever race. It was bizarre thinking about it now, but it was my first ever race abroad was World Championships. Um <laughs> So did world champs that year, and then uh, yeah, that that winter, um, I go home from like being at uni one day, and my mate was like, "Oh, there was a call for me from a guy called uh, Steve P," and I was like, "I just thought it was one of my friends like winding me up," um, but he ended up left the number, I called him back, and I'd met him, I'd met Steve obviously a few times that year, been racing and stuff, but uh, yeah, it was like a total. I mean, Steve was like the absolute hero, you know, and he was like the guy everyone looked up to. It was at the point when he was just like. I mean, obviously he did it for a long time, but he was the main man in the UK, just smashing on the World Cup. And yeah, it was it was an exciting time for sure. Yeah, that must have felt incredible to get noticed by Steve and then to have that opportunity to race for like what was kind of his development squad, I guess, back then with Royal Racing. That's it's a hell of an opportunity for starters. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, that was the, what was it? It would be the second or third year they had the Royal Racing, they'd been running the Royal Racing team. And, and you know, as a junior, the year, bef- the few years before me, it had been um, Neil Donoghue and a guy called Rich Barlow had been on it, who were two really amazing, you know, young riders at the time. And, you know, they were all in like the Sprung videos and, um, yeah, it's like really looked up to them. And then obviously Steve really helped them make a transition to World Cup racing. Um and uh, yeah, it was just for me. It was it was just the opportunity. I mean, Royal was obviously super cool. It was like an exciting team, amazing brand, and everything. But it was definitely the opportunity to ride with Steve as well. Um, as like a young kind of young athlete, you're like to be able to follow him down like a World Cup track was was incredible and really amazing to kind of learn from. Yeah, so that was your shift to doing more racing abroad. I guess to doing more World Cups at that point. Yeah, yeah, that was it. So as I say, I qual- I did World Champs. It was my first. Every year I did that as a junior. That was my first race abroad. Um, came 11th. That was out in Sierra Nevada. And then next year it was like full World Well, was it full World Cup season or certainly European ones? Um, and yeah, started going to the World Cup tracks and then obviously racing elite in the UK as well. Um, and it was a bit, yeah, it was definitely a, it was definitely a, a, I actually found it quite a challenge at the time to like step up to the World Cup tracks because they were so physical and I was quite a skinny kid and, um, I always performed really well in the UK, but then the, went to the big tracks and like, I remember with it be that year. Yeah, that year was the first ever Fort William World Cup. Okay, and uh, and the, that it was. I mean, it's hilarious because I feel like I was so good in the UK. We did I did an elite national at Interleaven the weekend before it, and I think I yeah I was fourth or fifth I think, and I think I just I would either just be or I was just behind Chris Kavarik, and it was like two seconds in it. And the next weekend, they put like 50 seconds in it or something in Fort William because <laughs> it was savage and it was the one he won by a mile. So, um, but yeah, it was a cool, it was a good time. And obviously, you know, every, everyone who's that age and makes the transition at World Cup racing, it's it's amazing just getting to travel and ride your bike. It's, it was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was cool. Do you think that was purely the physicality then as the change? Or do you think it was more than that? Like there's a lot going on, sort of stepping onto that world stage. Yeah, I mean, I, I to be honest, I could go into it because I took. I never really felt like I I made that step. If you know what I mean, like I I had some good results at World Cups, but I never felt like I really. I always performed really really well in UK level and UK nationals, but then never quite did it at World Cup. And I think, for me, it was a combination of definitely physicality. Um, I didn't really know what to do training wise. You know, there's a lot of expertise around now and a lot of support. And at the time, I was just, even though I rode with Steve, you know, he was based down in England. I was studying. Um, in you know up in Scotland kind of on a uni student budget um, and uh, I didn't really know what to do training wise so I was just trying to kind of keep fit and doing what I thought was right um, but then I think also I really str- I, for all my whole time racing I'd always been competing to win uh-huh. and then suddenly to compete to like you know first of all you're like okay I want to qualify and then it was like trying to get into the top, top 30 top 20 uh, for some reason I think I really struggled to 
had have that kind of process of like it's, it's so easy to look back on it now when you're a bit a bit more mature and I think I was just a bit naive as a kid but uh yeah I really struggled to kind of race for like a position you know but um yeah I think physicality more than anything it was a there were big hard tracks like um back particularly back then like you're racing I don't know like Caprun in the mud and you race for five minutes pedaling and uh, yeah I wasn't particularly strong I was good from the trials background I was always good technically but yeah never quite had the physical strength and the the, the power for pedaling as well yeah fair play what was the mountain bike kind of media like video landscape back then what sort of stuff do you remember watching and getting excited by because it's very different to the, the the landscape that we all sit in today right yeah for sure I mean I mean on the on the video side for me it was like that you know you wait till the end of the year to get a, a VHS of the World Cup season <laughs> and um, I, I mean for me primarily it was sprung you know I, I kind of met Alex when he was on the circuit we did some filming when I signed for Royal with him and, and, and Crawford who was riding for Giant at the time up in early then um, but that was the spr- sprung videos were really really influential and amazing and, and that kind of that whole culture that sat with it which was also um you know, Dirt Magazine, even then there was like Jerry who ran Dirt started Grip and there was like a bunch of kind of these these kind of magazines, but it really captured for me that whole culture, that whole time of like, it felt like the sport was kind of just, it was so young and figuring out what it was, but it was super exciting as well and all these like amazing personalities coming out of it as well. And um, But yeah, the, the, the video side sprung initially and obviously moved into Earth and then there was like Transcontinental, I think was one of like the World Cup season videos and then obviously a little bit later clay porter started up as well and kind of his early early videos as well so it was again it, it was a super exciting time and like the filmmaking side was really just early on but there was no no digital side so it was there was uh yeah somebody working away for a whole year on a project and then you got the vhs and i used to just play it on repeat at home so <laughs> yeah wear them out and it was sprung five yeah. i think that you featured in with crawford up in leitham which i rewatched earlier today actually it's a super cool segment it's on youtube if people <laughs> want to go and dig it out but um it must have felt amazing right because sprung had been ra- obviously been there'd been four sprungs before that so to finally feature on something must have felt like a right privilege to work with alex on that oh it was it was amazing and i was super nervous about it, actually i remember being back like just thinking it because it was such a big deal and i obviously like that sprung five so the previous ones i'd been such a fan of and like the the influence it had on both kind of riding the stuff you were even going to the dirt jumps and trying to like be like neil donahue you know or like um and then listening to like the, the music like mark being played that like that record got played so much um so it had such an influence on me like culturally that by the time i came back to be like oh i'm going to be filmed for this i was so nervous with it um but it was a it was a brilliant yeah it was an amazing time there for sure um and uh yeah it's quite funny to watch it back now as well yeah it and makes also it- the other thing that was really cool for us was was the, the scar scene because just the way i think the media was back then and like the magazines were all based in bath in england and like it was actually quite hard for scottish writers to get kind of recognition and get in magazines and get in the press and that's what creates sponsorship as well so um, it felt like there was a bit of a time there with like Crofty initially and then me and then Chris Ball coming through and like we started to kind of get a bit of momentum for, for Scottish the Scottish scene as well. 